Vivian Bullwinkle, one of Australia's most influential female nurses, is a true inspiration to not only myself, but women and young girls all across the nation. The sole survivor of the Banker Island Massacre and a prisoner of war, she showed great resilience and selflessness, defining the true values of a leader. Her quiet but powerful nature intrigues me. Not many have the ability to endure so much corruption and brutality and continue to fight for something so fervently. Her driving force, to live to tell her story, not so that she would be praised, but so that the other Australian nurses and people who had lost their lives were recognised and remembered for their work during the war. Vivian Bullwinkle formed her life on the basis of supporting others. It became her instinct. Her outcome, to help others, to make someone else's life better than it was. It is her courage and attentiveness which inspires me to lead like her and change the lives of many, just as she once did. During the lead up to World War II in 1934, at the age of 19, she began training as a nurse and midwife and five years later in 1939, the beginning of the war, she was assisting patients in Victoria when she decided to move to Melbourne to enlist for roles in the war. In her loyal nature, she was intent on being beside her brave Australian counterparts and applied for a nursing position in the Royal Australian Air Force. She was declined during a medical assessment because of her flat feet, the same feet which would later carry her barefoot for three and a half years in Japanese captivity. In May 1941, she applied to volunteer for the Australian Army Nursing Service. I admire her persistence and driven mindset to help others and stand by her aspirations. After that year, Vivian was assigned to the Australian General Hospital in Singapore. After an invasion from the Japanese troops, Vivian, alongside 65 nurses and a number of patients, were forced to flee the country. The Werner Brook, which was to carry them to safety, was hit by a Japanese aircraft. Some of the nurses, including Vivian, helped to move the wounded to the top of the deck. The civilians were ordered to go over the side first and Vivian Bullwinkle lent a hand to those afraid. She said, those that weren't too keen to leave, we gave a helping hand to. A tribute to her attentive and charitable values. She was able to remain level-headed in times of utter chaos and serve from the front, a difficult but valuable skill to possess. A number of passengers and 22 nurses made it ashore to Rudgy Beach on Banker Island. When discovered by the Japanese, the nurses were ordered to wade into the sea, where they were machine gunned from behind. They all knew what was going to happen to them, she recalled. But no one panicked. They just marched ahead with their chins up. Vivian was struck by a bullet in the hip, but feigned her death until the persecutors had disappeared. The sole survivor of the massacre... She hid for 12 days, during which she met up with Private Pat Kingsley, a survivor of the attack on the British soldiers just before the attack on the nurses. Vivian, while injured herself, attended to his wounds and procured whatever food she could find. Her bravery, persistence and selflessness is that of a leader which I aspire to be. She retired from the army and was appointed Director of Nursing at the Fairfield Infectious Diseases Hospital. She also served as a member of the Council of the Australian War Memorial and raised funds for an Australian Nurses Memorial. Her leadership inspires me to show empathy and assistance to those who are in need of care and to fight for something I believe in, because there will, be, there will always be an outcome. Her experience reminds me to continue to stand back up on my feet, even when I've been knocked down.